This is Damian Macy, and I'm at the home of Janet and Dudley Crow at 906 Hickory Street, Ash Street, and as a part of our oral history project at the Marshall Library, I'm here for an interview, and we'll start with Mr. Crow. So, Dudley? Mr. Macy. I have known you for a while now through Rotary, and I knew you are on the, the library board. That's correct. But just give us some background of what you would like as far as a martial history, and I knew you went to school here for a while. So just give us some background. Of I moved to Marshall in August of 1959 after living in Fairfield, Illinois for seven years. I was born in Tacoma, Washington, and we moved from uh, Washington to, uh, to Alton and then to Fairfield. And it was for Fairfield where I did the majority of my grade school, junior high, and then moved to Marshall. And so I actually literally moved here two weeks before high school started in 59, knowing no one. My mother took me to the high school for registration um, shortly after we arrived, and there were two guys walking down the hall toward the office who became great friends. And they were Jim Mitchell and Larry Woodard. And Larry Woodard's still here, and Jim Mitchell was in California. And that began my experience in Marshall, Illinois. We lived at 514 South 6th Street, which is where 6th is just in the, begins the north-south route, which is, appears to be Michigan, but it's not Michigan there at 6th Street, where, where 6th Street intersects with Michigan and becomes so off the block in the Catholic Church. Um, and we, were, we rented a large two-story house, and that's where we lived when I was the entire time that I attended high school in Marshall. And I began my high school experience knowing no one other than those two guys that I met in the hallway who became close friends. Became active in the Methodist Church and the MYF, the Methodist Youth Fellowship. I wasn't an athlete, so I didn't play football. So my name wasn't in the paper every other day. I didn't play basketball, couldn't dribble and shoot at the same time, couldn't dribble without looking at the ball. So I was not an athlete. But what I did do, in addition to the academic work, I played the drums. And I was fortunate. That gave me a leg up on getting to know a few people at the high school, particularly the high school marching band, high concert band, I had started playing the drums in the fifth grade in Fairfield and became rather proficient at it. In my eighth grade year, I was first chair because the guys that I followed had gone on to high school. And so that left me holding the bag. And the band director, like so many band directors, I think was a former Marine Corps drill sergeant. But he, was, he, he led a good band. We competed in junior high in state contests, and we either run first or first superior. Every year we competed. We were good. And so I came here after, but the kids here at that time didn't start instruments until the seventh grade. So I had two years of experience that they didn't have. And the music that they were starting to learn to play then in high school, I had already played. And I had some semblance of what to do with the music and how to execute that music with the particularly the snare drum. And we would we would rotate the snare drum bass drum. And I did that along with everyone else and had a great time with the band and then the mixed choir. So that was that was my non academic experience. I was on the golf team, but probably because they had five flights. Uh, but and, and I competed in that and did all right. Uh, did all right academically. Uh, enjoyed the uh, some of the teachers, particularly, um, you know, Mr. Marshall. I liked him. I liked Frank Pulaski, and he taught uh, he taught biology. I lived through Teddy Callis, who taught chemistry and physics, mm -hmm. and that was um, a difficult experience for most of us. Although some did exceptionally well, and we would hide the test paper so they couldn't get us, so they wouldn't. No, we did not. But and Bob Morris, Bob, particularly Bob Morris, who taught mathematics. And we would come back every year when Janet and I would come back to visit because her family 
I still lived here. Mom, dad, aunts and uncles, cousins still lived in Marsh, and we would come back a couple times a year from wherever we were living. My parents had moved on after I left high school, finished high school, and, and started at the University of Illinois. My family moved to Fort Wayne, and so I had no family here, but kept coming back to visit friends, but primarily to visit family, Janet's family, who became my family in Marshall. And Marshall, um, I've lived here probably the least amount of time, as most communities, but it all, it's always been home. I think that's part of that, that formation period when you're in high school, that it becomes um, so important to you, and it became important to me. So that's why Marshall. Looking at Marshall today versus the time then, what would you say has been some of the biggest changes or the differences in the community? There are some architectural changes, but not many. The town really appears to be very much the same. You know, the, the fire department's where a marathon station used to be. Archer House still is the Archer House, and people still buy the Archer House and try to make it go, and, and then don't, and then somebody else buys the Archer House. The, the band shell on the courthouse square. I spent three years, three summers, playing in the city band, led also by Von Arnie, Von Arnie, who was the high school, you know, you would think he was, he was my coach. As some guys would tell you about their football coaches, basketball coaches, Von Arnie was my musical coach. He was the band director for the city band. He was the band director for the high school marching band. He was the band director for the Marshall uh, a symphony. He was the choral director for the mixed choir. He was the choral director for the Methodist Church choir. So, and as a grade school student at the old Northside School, he would come and have chorus. Oh, yeah. He was very he was on the good. Third floor. He was. He took. He he took me and made me blossom as a uh, a drummer. He asked me when I was my freshman year, because an event was coming up, he asked me if I had a set of traps. And I said, no, sir, I don't even hunt. He said, no, do you have a set of drums? I said, no, I don't. But it wasn't long before my dad found a used set of drums. And those were my drums. It wasn't a big set. It was a bass drum, a snare drum, a, a, ride, a ride drum, a ride tom, hi-hat, and a um, big ride cymbal. And I played in the, in the, in the small group and that played at the intermission for plays. That was, that was fun. I also played in a big band that, was, that met at the Methodist Church, the basement, of the basement of the Methodist Church when I was a junior. I was 16 and the next youngest guy was 35. We were playing big band music. And that was my really first introduction to big band music. And I, I made the decision that big band music was made for drummers. Now, trumpet players might say, no, 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 this made for trumpet players. You lived in several other places, but a few years ago came back to Marshall. What brought you back here? We lived, when Janet and I got married in 1980, I moved from Chicago to go to Lawrence, Kansas to marry Janet. And she allowed me to help her rear four children. Children were reared. Uh, Janet had uh, retired at the University of Kansas. My business was such that because I work with companies all over the country, I can work about anywhere. So we decided to move back home. We wanted to be someplace as we aged where there were family and friends near us that could help support us. And we always had a great love and affinity for Marshall. So we came back to Marshall almost two years ago. We bought this house that we're in right now in January of 13. We wanted to live within the old boundaries of Marshall because we wanted to ride our bikes about wherever we wanted to go, and we can. There are no big hills. There are, there are some hills. People say there are Marshall flat. Well, it's not. If you, there are certain places you can go. You ride your bike, you'll find out it's not as flat as you might think it is. And we, we wanted to move back and be among friends. You know, it's... A lot of towns lose their high school graduates. Many have stayed. Many, many of the people that we knew in high school live in Marshall. Well, what we have found also is many of those people that did move away, like, oh, I want to get away from this place, 
sometime in their life do end up coming back. Amazing. And that's what says a lot about the community. That happens in a lot of university communities, mm -hmm. particularly where someone has, uh, whether it's their undergraduate or graduate degree, they, they come back to that university community. In fact, the lady that bought our house in Lawrence, Kansas, our house was on the market for a long time, done about three weeks. And this lady came back and she wanted to live back in Lawrence, Kansas. She wanted to live where she knew her house would be safe because she traveled a great deal. She wanted some kind of flora and fauna around her. We were on a golf course. You couldn't see the neighbors and the house just fit her build to a T. So that, that really increased the, uh, the opportunity to come to Marshall and considerably reduce the time for us to think about moving back and getting ready. It was just suddenly list the house, okay, pack. And then we, uh, and it was priced right. It, uh, I, I think a realtor said, no, you're asking too much. I said, no, that's what, that's what we're going to sell for. And that's about what we sold it for. So we came back to Marshall, and I was not going to get involved. I was heavily involved in Lawrence. Janet was heavily involved in Lawrence. I was the past president of two Optimus clubs. The last one was in Lawrence. And we had a club of about 77 members. In my year of presidency, we made honor and distinguished. I think there were four clubs in the country that made honor and distinguished. But because we had everybody involved, everybody was participating. We had a lot of participation by the members, and that's what made it cook. Having been involved a lot in the Main Street organization in Marshall, which is volunteer-oriented, we fortunately have a lot of good volunteers yes. in Marshall. Well, it's been a pleasure visiting with you, Dudley, and found out a little bit about your more background and where you live. And I'm glad to hear you came back to Marshall. Well, thank you very much, Dan. We're and glad I, to have you as a resident. I enjoyed having breakfast with you on Tuesday morning. Enjoy your other week. Thank you very much.